I'm gonna stress this the best way I know how. Do not watch this video. Seriously, I know a lot of kids watch and people with kids in the room are watching and I'm not being traumatic here. Do not watch this video. If you're a dark, soulless human being who hates animals, this might be the video that you can handle. Everyone else, get out now. I'm not playing around. I will be showing limited visuals because the graphic nature of this movie goes beyond what I'm willing to show. So I accidentally came across a movie called The Plague Dogs. I'm not even sure how I found it because after I made the mistake of watching it, my entire brain went numb and this video is now my therapy session so that I can emotionally vomit into the void of the internet and hopefully move on with my life and stop all these feels. Seriously, The Plague Dogs is a movie that you will never forget, never stop talking about, but you will never want to watch it again. This movie is so messed up. It's all about animal test subjects. The film opens up showing a dog named Ralph pathetically drowning. And I don't mean like, ha ha, he's pathetic. I mean, it's pathetic to watch because here's an animal being forced to die as part of an experiment. He's in a situation that's impossible to win. We learn that this dog has to die in a water tank every single day of his life just for the sake of being revived and drowned again so that the scientists can test his endurance. And that's not even the worst of it because dead dogs are littered all over this movie and it is emotionally grinding to watch. I had to stop it several times just to cry and this is one of the few movies where I did book research to try and make sense of it all, which may in turn make this video a little extra bizarre. But okay, that's Rolf's story. Then we have Snitter, which is a fox terrier who had a loving home at one time, but due to some insanity, he got sold off to the testing facility. The company operates on Snitter's brain to try and connect his conscious and subconscious mind, and that leaves him all crazy and saying things that don't always make sense. The book even describes Snitter as constantly seeing rain out of one eye. And what I find so troubling about the research is that it isn't like some vital life-saving research that we need to save a million human lives. No, these are quack researchers saying, I wonder what would happen if we do blank. It is so obscenely cruel and the tests have no practical use in reality. What person will drown every day of their life? Who wants their conscious and subconscious mind connected? Yet despite all of this evil brought to these helpless dogs by humans, all Rolf wants to do is be free and away from people. But the dogs are unable to even feed themselves without the help of a fox because they don't know how to be wild animals. And so the dogs start getting sickly and lean from trying to live on their own. On the other hand though, Snitter always wants a new master to take care of them because, well, his brain is messed up and he's crazy. That's the only justification I can think of. However, Snitter realizes that that's not really realistic after all. And this happens once he tries to befriend a new human and while jumping up in his lap, accidentally pulls the trigger to a double barrel shotgun that shoots the man in the face, which is then depicted in the film by showing the man covering his severely bleeding face. Why was this necessary? They don't even refer to this man again. So he wasn't important to the plot and surely Snitter could have gotten kicked or have something else happen to deter him from ever wanting a new owner. This did not need to occur in a film marketed to children. Actually, none of this movie should have happened in a film marketed to children. If dogs aren't fat and happy and chasing things for fun, they don't belong in the script. But basically the movie ends with the two dogs being chased to the shoreline by the military because that friendly little animal testing facility also had the bubonic plague in there. So even though Rolf and Snitter weren't exposed to it, when it was revealed that two dogs from that lab escaped, opportunistic reporting and public fear did not mix well together. So while trapped at the shoreline, Snitter claims to see an island out in the distance and decides to swim for it. Rolf, with clear reservations about drowning again, reluctantly follows as the military closes in. However, the next moments of the film are so upsetting as Snitter starts to talk about his legs refusing to move anymore, even going on that the island isn't real. And all this is happening while the dog's heads are bobbing under the water and back up. They are drowning right in front of us. But then Rolf says he sees the island and the two of them keep moving forward through the fog. The credits show us an image of an island in the distance, but we don't know if it's real or if the dogs make it there. And the island looks so far away, it feels impossible for the dogs to reach it in their current state. So honestly, here's how I read that ending. I think Snitter 
Peter was the voice of hope throughout everything. He noticed the cage was unlocked. He wanted to find a new human to take care of them. He claimed to see the island that we viewers don't see. Snitter kept going forward with the belief that life would get better if they just tried something new. And when Snitter's body began to break down in the water, so did his hope. And that was so tragic to hear that Rolf took over to keep Snitter going forward, to keep hope alive as it were. And this is where the testing background gets interesting because we know Rolf was experimented on for endurance reasons. So if there was an island a few miles offshore, he's got a good chance of making it there. I mean, he struggles and paddles and attempts to stay alive as long as possible every time the scientists drown him. That means his muscles are built for this journey and that's why he's not complaining about getting tired. It's not because he's a bigger dog, it's because he's been trained for endurance. Snitter, however, is not used to that kind of a workout and he is exhausted, probably freezing in the water, and definitely hungry as the dogs have lost most of their body fat while in the wild. And I don't think Snitter ever saw a real island. I think he had a dreamlike concept of this ideal place where they could be free and with his subconscious and conscious mind being connected, he believed he saw something that wasn't really there, just like the rain in his eye. Now, if hope does win out and the island is real and both dogs make it there, what would stop the military from chasing them down again? Or who's to say there's anything edible on said island? It seems like no matter what the outcome is, the truth is that these dogs will never have a happy ending because this is a for real serious tragedy disguised as a kid's book. These dogs were doomed from the moment they became science experiments and I swear this film is why there's a website called DoesTheDogDie.com. For those of you who made it this far, I do want to leave you with a glimmer of my own kind of hope to keep hope alive because in the book things don't happen quite the same way. I don't know what movie producer or writer thought the animated ending was a good choice but they were sadistic a-holes pure and simple. Now my understanding is that the original author Richard Adams was told by the publishers that a happier ending was required for the plague dogs. So Snitter's owner reappears just in time to watch the dogs drown. Yeah if I wasn't sure they died in the animation before that reconfirms everything. But it's not a sad ending because Peter Scott, a real person who loves nature and who was apparently a friend of Richard Adams, just so happens to wander by the dogs in his boat and saves them in the nick of time. Then Snitter's original owner takes both dogs and they live happily ever after. Frankly, I realized that ending was really forced and bad and Adams clearly didn't give it a ton of thought as it was probably written out of spite. But I'm thankful it exists anyway so that I have have some hope of sleeping again without feeling so sad for Rolf and Snitter. It might not be reality, but theories are more fun, no, sad, depressing. Don't watch this movie. Please tell me you didn't make it to the end. Well, that's all I have for now, but this video's not quite over yet. I get a lot of comments that say, do a theory on this topic, but I've already done those theories. So please consider going to my main channel page and clicking on the video tab so that way you can see everything I've done. You will probably find a lot of things you like that you never even knew that I posted. I want to let you know that I also have two other channels, Say Halo Goodbye Gaming and The Family Family Vlogs. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed enough to hit subscribe and share. I can use all the help I can get to let other people know that this channel exists. And if you made it this far, leave me a comment that says something like, hey, I made it to the end. And then let me know what kind of videos you want to see in the future. Future. I can't make any promises, but the more people that request something, the more I can look into it. Okay, well, I love you. I'll see you in the next video.